So good morning, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and begin the training. My name is Brian Hyman. I'm the data product manager here at RELSI. And thanks again for joining and attending this group training session. Our client success managers, Ashley, Alexa, and Grace are also on the line, and they'll be participating in the Q&A portion of this session. These sessions will act as initial trainings for new users and a great refresher for more experienced users. For those of you who don't know, these are gonna occur twice per month, and you can find all of the relevant information regarding future training sessions, as well as past training sessions, right here in the training link from your home page in RELSI. Please check back here regularly as we're gonna be updating this, and actually we're gonna be updating it very soon uh, as we're nearing the end of our scheduled three months uh, of webinar sessions. These April sessions will be uh, the last sessions uh, according to what we have planned in here, but we have plans for three more months and we'll be updating this section shortly uh, with information regarding those future sessions as well as a link uh, so that you can easily register for the sessions. And again, we'll also be uploading uh, the video recordings of our training sessions here. So if you maybe missed out on the first couple months, feel free to go to RELSI training right here again, and you can find our previously recorded sessions right here. They're also on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you could also go to youtube.com and just type in relationship science. Our channel should be one of the first results. And you can find these videos as well as some other training videos on our YouTube channel. Now in this session, I'm gonna discuss advanced query tools in RELSI, primarily searching for new connections and relationship paths. You're gonna have the ability to submit any questions that you may have along the way via the question box in GoToWebinar. And I'm gonna to try to leave as much room as possible at the end for questions. I'm sure there, there will be plenty. We have a pretty robust agenda this morning and a lot to cover. I'm going to be probably moving a little bit faster than, than usual, but please uh, bear with us and, and feel free to submit any questions along the way and we'll be sure to address those at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started and thank you all again for attending this session. So starting out, I'd like to navigate over to PowerSearch. Now, what I wanna show you here, we've covered PowerSearch a little bit in previous sessions. And for those of you who may have missed out on those, PowerSearch is essentially a query tool. It gives you really uh, a robust UI that allows you to search our database. Uh, and what I'm gonna be showing you here is sort of like a complete workflow using PowerSearch to identify um, you know, ideal targets that you'd like to reach out to. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about you know, some of the options uh, that allow you to sort and manage the results of any given search. And then we're gonna jump into Pathfinder uh, directly from PowerSearch. So let's get started here. Now we've covered a little bit about all of the different fields here and how you can use PowerSearch. So I'm not gonna go into all of that. If you're interested, um, please feel free to submit a question or refer to our previous training sessions. But for this morning's example, I'd like to conduct just a basic search. Uh, so I'm gonna be looking for a certain type of employee. I'm looking at C-suite and senior management. And, you know, if I wanted to refine this search, you know, and, and uh, filter it down to one company, I could, you know, type in Apple Inc. or something like that. Uh, but I actually want this to be a little bit more of a broad search. So instead of searching for uh, people who are at Apple in leadership positions, I'm going to search the entire technology industry. Um, so this will result in, you know, companies similar to Apple. Um, and again, this is going to be a very robust search. So if you do want to filter that down to a subset of companies, you can actually take this out. You could search wholesale technology. You could go through the results of that search and filter that search down to the ideal basket of companies that you'd like. You can add those results to a list and then search that list from here. 
And once I generate these results, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm going to commit search. So again, I'm looking for C-suite and senior management who are at any type of company that we've tagged as wholesale technology. Now this is gonna generate pretty soon and I'm expecting a lot of results. And I have some functionality here that will allow me to filter those results. So here we go. We have 3,800 results. Now what I was saying before, if you did want to filter down these companies and add them to a list, you could select some of these and you would just go to add to list, right? So I could add all of these 3,800 results to that list. I could say these are tech execs and I'm gonna save that list. So now I can refer to it in future searches. I can also save this search by the way. Same thing, I could say, oh, they're not Lafayette board, but I could say these are tech execs. Uh, I could put in a brief description. I could even turn on 360 degree alerts. Uh, so we covered this in a past session as well. Um, and then this will create custom alerts for these search results, but I'm not gonna do that right now. What I wanna show you is you have a large list of results here. Now what I can do is I can filter these results to my firm right here and it's gonna recommit the search. And what it just did was it filtered down that 3,800 uh, list to a list of 65 individuals that in some way, shape or form, my firm is connected to. Now that means that either I have relationships there or my colleagues do. So you'll notice that you know this is basically being added uh, to equal the total, right? So there's one overlapping connection here and that comprises all of the results of my firm. Now, if I wanted to search extended, that would include anyone that is connected maybe to one of my colleagues. So, you know, I have access to them via my extended network. Now, if I wanna sort the results, I have a few different options. RELSI rank is based on what we've determined as their rank within their given company. That's why people like Michael Dell are obviously topping this list. He, you know, of course we've determined has a lot of influence over Dell Technologies. Um, but what we could also do is we could filter by role, by tenure. So who's been in that role for the longest? Uh, we could sort first name out alphabetically, tenure start date, or we could filter by RELSI relationships. And sometimes this is helpful, especially uh, with regards to navigating to the next part of my search, which is going to be related to Pathfinder. If I sort by RELSI relationships, it's going to show me the people that have the most relationships mapped by RELSI. So Mark Papermaster here, he's the CTO uh, of AMD. You might have seen AMD in the news a lot recently. Uh, and he has over 23,000 RELSI relationships. So that's the ideal candidate for this type of search. And I'm gonna jump into Pathfinder, but before I do that, I just wanna point out to you that you can also report the results of these searches. And you can do that uh, by generating CSV or PDF uh, reports. You could download this and you could continue using the platform. You could have the report emailed to you. And these can be very helpful because you can share them around with your colleagues or you know, if you generate as a CSV, maybe there's a, a little bit of a additional work that you wanna do in uh, uh, Excel. You can customize this report to include additional details as well. And again, we've covered this in previous sessions, so I don't wanna spend too much time here, but feel free to refer to our previous recordings or ask any questions about this. We'd be happy to help you out. Now, like I said, I wanna take Mark as my example here and I wanna quickly jump into Pathfinder. So what it's doing right here is Power Search is actually showing the results of my shortest path. So this is a two hop path, meaning I connect to one individual and that individual might be able to connect me with Mark. So that's a very short path. A lot of times you'll have three degrees, four degrees, et cetera. Uh, but let's jump into this for, for further details. So I'm gonna click see all. It's gonna bring me into the next window. And this is actually running a Pathfinder search. So what the search is doing is it's saying, I'm running uh, from your firm to Mark Papermaster. 
Now, when you're running a Pathfinder search, you can start with a few different uh, starting points. And why don't I just take a step back really quickly for those of you who are not familiar with Pathfinder, since I've now jumped into a completely separate tool. Pathfinder is our main relationship mapping tool. And this was des designed, excuse me, to leverage your existing relationship capital and show you potential ways that you could connect with target individuals and organizations alike. You can use Pathfinder to run searches between individuals. You can use it to run searches between organizations and you can mix and match. So you can run a search from an individual to an organization, from an organization to an individual. You can even leverage lists with Pathfinder. So you could run from a list to an individual or an organization, and you can even run from a list to a list. So maybe you have a list of prospects and you have a list of people whose relationships you're trying to leverage. You can run Pathfinder searches uh, leveraging both of those lists simultaneously. So it's a very powerful tool and there's a lot of different ways that you can work with it. Now jumping into this really quickly since I have my results generated here. Again, I was showing you that you can run these searches from my firm's relationships, from my relationships, from my colleagues, and again, we're running to Mark right now, but we could run to Mark's organization, so AMD. We could run to maybe a list of AMD employees that we're interested in connecting with. There are really a lot of different ways that you can run this search. Now, what Pathfinder is doing is it's taking your from and to that you're trying to compute, and it's showing you the usually the top 300 results of paths available based on relationship likelihood. Now, what is relationship likelihood? So we have an algorithm that determines the likelihood of any two individuals knowing each other. It's really, really robust. And if you have questions, feel free uh, to ask them. But essentially what it's doing is it takes into account where they've worked throughout the years, what memberships they may have in common between two targets, let's say two target individuals. It's gonna compare what boards and committees they've been a part of, spousal and familial relationships, what transactions they've done together, if any. There are really so many fields that this algorithm takes into account, but it actually takes things one step further and it looks at how long did they sit on a given board together or how long did they work together? Was it six months? Might re result in a pretty weak score. But if it was 10 years, might result in a very strong score. How long ago did this happen? How senior were these individuals? What size of the company or the board were they on? Were they working in different offices? Was one person working you know, at the AMD headquarters, let's say in New York, and another person was working on the West Coast? Well, maybe then they don't know each other. There are so many things that are taken into account with regards to relationship likelihood, but essentially what's happening is it's computing all of these data items that we've collected, and it's showing you a relationship likelihood score of strong in red, average in orange, or weak in yellow. And this is really just meant to show you what is the probability that these two individuals know each other, right? So maybe they overlapped working together 10 years ago and you know they, the overlapping period was only a few months and it's a really, really large organization. Well, that's likely gonna result in a score of weak because our algorithm is essentially saying, Mm, these two individuals probably never ran into each other. It's possible, but the likelihood is weak. Now, I could spend a long time talking about relationship likelihood, and I don't want to take up too much time because there's a lot of functionality I want to get to. But like I said before, if you have any questions about relationship likelihood, please feel free to ask them. We'd be happy to address those questions. Now, moving on, we're looking at the results of my firm to Mark Papermaster here. These are the results below. These are all profiled individuals in RELSI. So if I hover over Lisa, 
I'm going to get a baseball card that's going to pop up momentarily, and it's going to give me some insights on her work history. So here it is. So she's the current CEO of AMD. I can add her again to a list. I can follow her. I can generate paths to her specifically. And if I hover over here, I'll see that one of my colleagues, this development account, has marked Lisa as a connection. And if I hover between Lisa and Mark, I can see why the system thinks they know each other. Now, this is a really easy one, right? Lisa's the CEO and has a ton of other previous positions at AMD. And Mark is the current CTO. So chances that the CEO knows the CTO, yeah, we think that's a strong likelihood. Okay, great. So now let's hover down to someone who's, eh, yeah, we can use someone who's average. And we see, okay, so Ray was a managing director at AMD. We don't really know when he stopped working there, if he stopped. And of course, Mark is the current CTO. Now, because we have tenure unconfirmed here and a few other uh, uh, data items, then we're computing this as an average likelihood. So yes, they may very well know each other, but we're not as confident as Lisa, who's the current CEO, knowing Mark, who's the current CTO. Now, let's say I'm looking through this search and you know this may not be relevant to everyone on the line right now. I'm sure you guys don't have development accounts, but maybe a similar instance appears in your use case where you have this one person who marked a ton of relationships and maybe they're really busy and they can't introduce you to someone, they, they don't have the capacity right now, or maybe you just know that person has a lot of relationships in their account that they wouldn't necessarily leverage, whatever the case may be, you wanna root this individual out of your search because you think these results can't be used for any reason, either they're not reliable or they're not accessible to you, whatever the reason may be. You can go to this My Firm filter here and you can say, all right, well, I don't want to see paths through development. And you know what? Maybe I don't really wanna see paths through Jenny or Jeremy either. Right, I just want to see paths through Neil Goldman because he's our founder. And let's say, you know, I'm just thinking Neil's relationships are going to be the easiest ones to leverage because he works at a very high level. He's the founder of RELSI. He has connections to a lot of C-suite executives. So I generally regard Neil's connections as the most reliable ones. So let's apply this. And it's going to rerun this search. You guys should still be able to see my screen, I'm hoping. Hang on, sorry guys, I think some technical difficulties. Let me just pop this in and out so you can see my screen. And there we go, now everybody can see my screen again. So I'm not sure if you saw what I just did, but I accessed this My Firm filter here. And previously I had all of these individuals selected. And now I'm going to take them out. And like I said, I'm just going to access Neil's relationship paths to Mark. So that's what I'm doing here. Now I can hover over and of course, Neil marked Jerry here as a connection. And if I hover over here, I'll see that Jerry and Mark were, uh, he was the member of the board of directors for JDRF and Mark was on the advisory committee. So it's, possible that they know each other, but again, unlikely. So maybe that's not a path that I want to leverage. But if I scroll down here, and again, this is just the shortest path. Now this next one down here has all strong relationship likelihood. So there's an additional hop here, but it's possible that this might be a more reliable path because Neil knows RJ. Let's hover over here. RJ was the CEO of Goodyear and Jonathan worked there for a pretty long time, so they must know each other. And I'm thinking, okay, Neil has a good relationship with RJ. RJ would be happy to introduce me to Jonathan. Now, how does Jonathan know Mark? Okay, so that looks highly likely that they would know each other as well, both being very involved in, in Phillips Lighting. 
So maybe this is the path that I want to go after, right? So it's all about path analysis and looking down the list of results, hovering in between here, seeing what the overlapping criteria is, and just going from there. Now that's just one filter that I just used, but I can also filter on first degree relationship, uh, excuse me, first degree path. I could say I only wanna look at C-suite execs who are current C-suite execs, or maybe I wanna look at prior C-suite execs or prior board members. You can mix and match here, and you can do the same thing with the second degree. And if I commit any of these filters, it's gonna rerun this search again. It's gonna compute the results based on what I'm looking for and what the system determines as my best path forward. Now I have some more robust filtering options up here. If I click into this filter button, I can filter certain types of paths. So maybe I only wanna view people who have connections through their career. I could deselect everything except for career. Or maybe I'm just looking for board relationships, so I could deselect everything here and say, I just want to look at people who are connected through the board of directors board or advisory board. I can also remove paths exclusively through a given organization or only show paths through an organization. So maybe I only want to look at paths through AMD. Enter that filter there. And again, maybe I don't want to see paths through a target individual. So let's say I know that I can't get in touch with uh, Lisa who appeared here earlier. I can remove paths through Lisa Sue. Oops, scroll up here, who's the CEO? Maybe I know it's just not realistic that I'm going to get in touch with the CEO and then use that to leverage a connection with the CTO. So I'm gonna remove paths exclusively through her, but at the same time, I'm gonna show only paths through AMD. And I'm gonna broaden this a little bit just by selecting these options again. And just so you're aware, there are also advanced filtering options down here. So you could filter based on people who attended a given university and you can relate uh, include related schools, excuse me, such as sister schools. Or you could do the same for career, people who are at a given company or people who are members of a given organization. So I'm going to run this search. And it didn't find any paths. So maybe I want to take this one out and rerun this again. Now, an important thing to keep in mind is if you're filtering too much, your search might be too specific. So let's rerun this with a couple other filters. So I think it's this one here. Apologies, forgot about this filter. Let's rerun that. So if you ever run into this issue where you're running a bunch of searches and you're not getting any path results, just go through your filters again and make sure that you didn't select something and forget about it like I just did. So here we go. So now I wanna get this development account out of here again. So let's rerun and just look at Neil. And that's what I wanted. So again, this is just showing you how you can interact with the filters to specify your search a little bit more. And here's some sorting options. So right now I'm sorting by number of degrees, but maybe I'd rather sort by path strength. So that's gonna be based on relationship likelihood. And I can also group these by first or second degree paths. Right now I'm doing first degree paths, meaning Anyone on this hop right here, if they have multiple paths, let's scroll down a little bit and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm too, too uh, specific here again. Let's go back out just so I can show you the grouping.
And guys, I'm going to wrap this up shortly so that we can get into the Q&A portion. But if I scroll down here, there should be, nope, still not. Anyways, if there are multiple options for Lisa to mark for any reason, if there's, let's say there's an additional degree after mark, it will group those paths here. Popped up earlier in the search, you could click see more and it will open up and show you additional paths through that individual. And last thing I wanna point out is that you can report these out as a PDF report or a CSV. You can include some additional fields or if you're running a PDF, you can increase the amount of paths shown. All right, and that's it for now. I wanna save enough time to answer some of your questions. So I'm gonna cut it here and we'll open this up and start answering some questions. Sure, so I'll take the first one. Um, someone asked, can I upload a list of companies? It looks like your template is designed just for individuals. Brian, do you mind just opening the list template really quickly just so we can explain what should be completed? So on the list template, totally understand where you're coming from. It could be a bit confusing, but if you have a list of organizations, you would basically complete the company column, which Brian is about to show you. You'll complete the company column with the full company name. If you also happen to have the organization's website, their ticker symbol, if you happen to have their city state zip, you can include those as well. Oh, Brian, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know what, you don't even pull it up, that's fine. So basically complete the company column with the organization name, and if you happen to have their website or any other identifiers, feel free to include those as well. Basically then just save it as a CSV and you can upload into the list tool and it'll show you your successful matches, potential matches, and it will then be stored within your RELSI account. Oh, thank you, Brian. So company in column F, if you have G, H, I, J, K, L, M, those will also help to improve the match rate, but they're not required, just company name at a minimum. I can answer the next question. We got a question that asked, if we wanted to select some of the list of 3,800 people from the first power search search that Brian ran, how do you actually select a, some of them and add to a list? So from that original search, you can filter it down further, like Brian shared, but you can add a specific company or maybe an additional title. And that's how you can further filter down that list of our search of 3,800 people. And once it's narrowed down, you can then select add to list and use that list for any further reports in the tool. Right. so another question we had is when I just tried downloading a list to a CSV file, only 10 of the 21 contacts downloaded. Is this due to the limits of my subscription type? So likely what happened in this case is when you try to export, and Brian, if you want to just go ahead and click on the report button here as an example, um, what we're going to see is the preset um, in report details, right now it says all, but typically the preset is going to be the top 10. So I imagine you just had this filter on, which is why you only saw 10 of the 21 results. Just go ahead and change that. You should be able to include up to 300 in your export um, and you can see all of those results that way. Great, and Brian, if you wanna stay on Power Search and just scroll up a little bit, I have actually two questions that I can answer with Power Search. Someone asked, how do you query companies for a specific geographic area? So within Power Search, there's that location. You can search by city, state, zip, country. You can even search by continent. So that will narrow down the results within Power Search. And then if you scroll down, Brian, under the results, someone asked, could you demonstrate the mechanics of how you add some selections to a list? 
So first in Power Search, you would enter the criteria and refine your search with the titles, the companies, the location. And once the results are generated, so these 3,800 results, for instance, if you select Add to List, it gives you the option to either create a new list within the system, or if you want to add the results to an existing list that you've already created previously, you can just select the list there and save it. We had a question um, when you run a report and save it as a PDF, is there a way to see how the contacts are connected rather than just showing the path? If you export the reports as a PDF, you will see a breakdown of how the two individuals know each other, just like how you can see the connections if you hover over the link in Pathfinder. So for each connection, you will see how the two entities know each other. Brian, I think we lost your screen. Yeah, sorry about that. I just want to um, bring up a Pathfinder report really quickly. I'm just pulling it up, if you bear with me, uh, just to dig into that tiny bit more. Apologies for the wait. Here we go. So here's a Pathfinder report, and this is where you would see how these individuals are connected. So here's the path up here, and here's the connection criteria. And if we scroll down, it gets a little bit more robust, but it essentially does show you everything that you can view from the front end platform. Just wanted to point that out really quickly, but sorry to interrupt. Right, and I can take the next question. Um, someone asked, can you add two emails to receive notifications on a list? Um, the emails, the 360 alerts that will go out, and that's a tool that we've covered in a, a previous session, um, those are going to be tied to whatever email is associated with the RELSI license. Um, so likely that'll be your professional email and you'll receive the alerts that way. Um, if you need to change the email address associated with an account or swap the account to someone else on your team, uh, your client success manager would be happy to help you with that. Um, and you should have the option to share any news alerts um, as well, but we would just limit sending those to the license holder and the email associated with the license holder. And Brian, if you want to stay on Power Search and scroll up and under location, if you want to type in New York, for instance, someone asked, is it possible to see which company site the individual works for and the zip code location? So if you select New York and hit search again and have it rerun the search. So it does not show zip code location, but within the results, there is a snippet under the individual's name that does show you why they matched that criteria. So, you know, what board do they sit on or where do they work? What role do they hold? Depending on the search that you've refined. So if we put New York within the results, it will show you here, for instance, um, it looks like Michael Dell works at MDS Capital, which is New York City. If we happen to have their home location, it will also say lives at New York City. So if we have the location available, it will show the general area, but it does not go as far into showing the zip code. Another question that was asked about saving lists. When saving a list, can you select certain individuals within that list, or do you have to save the entire result? When you save a search, Brian, if you scroll up from Pathfinder, sorry, Power Search, and you were to add these group of people to a list, 
you can only add all 142 results to that list. But once the list is saved, you're able to go in and delete specific people off of that list to then have a group of people that most fit your, your search or that you'd like to target. Yeah, if you go to edit, de delete list items, you can select people you'd like to delete. So it looks like we went through all of the questions in the box. We'll pause for a moment to see if there's any last minute questions that come in. Um, but in the meantime, as Brian mentioned in the beginning, we planned out the next three months of webinars. So expect an email from your dedicated CSM um, sometime mid-April with the registration links and the different topics that we plan to host. And let's see, any other questions that came in, ladies? I don't think so. Oh, hold on, we did have a few more questions come in. So someone asked if you can briefly explain donor search. So we'll cover that really quickly, but that's actually one of the first topics that we're covering in the next webinar series. But Brian, if you go to donor search, power search is great because it's the main hub for prospecting. You can really narrow in on location, roles, companies. Donor search, I think is more strategic. So Brian, who are you raising money for? Let's type in um, a university or nonprofit, maybe where you went to school, Brian. Oh, perfect. And hit show donors. So I like to say that this is more outside the box prospecting because it shows you people that not only donated to, but worked at or sat on the board of a similar cause to that organization. So we think because they have affiliations with other like organizations, they might be more likely or inclined to donate work at or sit on the board of your specific cause. So under Larry, you can see he donated to similar causes, he's on the board of a similar cause, and he works at a similar cause. And the results will show you your shortest path, and it's the same functionality as Power Search, where you can add to a list or report out. So again, we're going to co cover this in detail during the next set of webinar sessions, but in general, it's more strategic to show you those different affiliations. Great, another question that came in is, are there any searches that would let you know your company's connection to spouses? So if you're in Pathfinder, and Brian, if you wanna just pull that up in, in your other tab here, one thing that you're able to do when you run a search is utilize that overall filter to look just by personal connections. So these are going to include spousal or familial relationships. Um, and it'll also include if we've been able to publicly verify that two individuals are friends. Um, I'm sure you can imagine <laughs> that it's sometimes a, a difficult task. Um, but if you were to click filter at the top, Brian, just to demonstrate where that is, you should see under certain path types right at the top, the option to include personal paths. So that's where you'll see the spousal or familial connections um, or any friend connections there as well. Great, and we got another question on donor search. So Brian, do you mind just navigating back to donor search? Um, someone just asked here if you can search by location within donor search. So you certainly can. It says where should donors be located? You can choose, again, city, state, zip, country, continent to narrow down the results. And looks like those are all the questions. We'll just pause for a minute. Okay, so we will, again, your dedicated CSM will reach out with the next three months of webinars. If you have any future topics that you'd like to see, please feel free to reach out to your CSM. And we would definitely appreciate 
taking 60 seconds to complete the survey with your thoughts, if it was helpful, any feedback that you have, so that way we can improve the next three months of sessions. But we appreciate everyone's time and all of these thoughtful questions. If we didn't get to anything, feel free to reach out to Grace, Alexa, or I, and we'd be happy to connect with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian.